Yeah, we're coming back. Julian, this is the start of the first race of the day. Um, what was your tactics at the start here? Well, it was pretty obvious that both Chris in uh, 280 and uh, Graham in 222 were going to try and sit on top of me. So with about 15 seconds to go, they were up behind me, committed to a pin end start. So we simply whipped down the other end and got, gave ourselves some clear breeze. What are you mainly concentrating on after the start? What are you looking to achieve? Well, you're basically looking for the clearest run you can for the longest distance you can. The person who has to take off first tends to uh, lose the soonest. And in this instance here, you've got Charlie McKee, who's a bronze medalist, picking a sensational lift and uh, proving that theory entirely wrong. The boat's powered Actually. up here and you're really getting a lot of boat speed. What are you concentrating on at this stage? Well, as you can notice, there isn't that much Cunningham on. The wind at the moment is probably 8 through to 12 knots. The, um, the boat via the Cunningham and the bang is set up to give us the best power that we possibly can with the main chute just off the centre line. And then once the boat is set like that, we do the sort of fine fine tuning by the main sheet movement, which you can see me moving there, and um, tiller movement to uh, just keep the boat on the right attitude. Also notice that Peter is doing all the looking around and I'm doing very little. Here you've got uh, Neil Cashman who is a, an 18 footer sailor. The boat seems to be up and down, is there a, what would you uh, ascribe that to? Well he's used to a sheet hand playing the sheet so he probably just doesn't have the relationship between the tiller and the sheet moving as well as he should be there. He's probably a little bit out of practice. Well, here you've got Clive, uh, a very experienced B14 sailor who's been in the class now for about six or seven years um, and the boat is going well. Uh, is there any comments on that Clive's technique there? Well, again, he's got the boat settled down very well. He's got his main sheet moving more than his tiller, um, which is quite important in these boats. You're going that fast, you don't want to move the helm that much because it generates a lot of drag. Uh, the only, my only comment to Clive there is he probably doesn't have enough uh, leech tension on his tube. Peter here is obviously working your tactics and uh, telling you what to do. How much do you depend on a forward hand at that level? If you look carefully at during that shot, while I was looking away from the boat, the, um, the jib was backing, which means that I was too high and the whole boat was slowing down. When you have a forward hand of Peter's capacity, it is that much easier to drive the boat harder and faster because you can rely on him. Forward hands in, in all of these boats are critical and the, the forward hand that gives the skipper the most information, useful information instead of rubbish, I should stress, are, are worth their weight in gold. In this particular race, Julian, you were the first to the uh, windward mark and then really worked well up on the first reach. What stage do you start to prepare for the reach mentally? Probably 20 to 30 seconds prior to uh, getting to the windward mark. You, you have a fairly good look at it and make a decision whether 
to set or not set a kite, you virtually always set um, rather than not set because the, uh, the penalty for not setting is normally far greater than that to set and drop. That tack there, Julian, we watch it again. Um, is this recommended uh, technique to stand up in the boat? No, and uh, as you probably noticed, I didn't see the gust coming there and the boat healed. I also turned backwards, which is a no-no. I don't think it was the best tack to get me on. As you come into the uh, mark, Julian, do you uh, make any adjustments to your rig here? Are you ease bang or anything like that? You ease bang just to allow the boat to come away a bit easier. You can see there Peter's hoisted the kite. I'm pulling the brace line out. While that's happening, the boat's come around square, but it's basically remained flat. Here's second and third coming in. One of the problems they're having here is setting the kites. Is, it, uh, is there a technique to make sure that the kite fills and sets quickly? Well, your problem on 131, which is again Charlie McKee, is that uh, Becky, his wife, has never set a kite before in her life. So she's always be having a few problems. And um, Charlie also overcorrected coming into the mark. The, the basic thing is to keep the speed on and the skipper must concentrate on where the boat's going and keeping it flat and allowing the, the crew to do the job of setting the kite until you feel confident enough to assist, obviously. It's a classic situation here where not enough bang has come off on 300, so the boat over rolled too much going into the turn. You'll find that 280, Chris has got, will have a dead right. That's a quite a competent lift. Uh, let's have a look at that again. You can see the crew there is getting the halyard up very, very fast. There goes Chris pulling the brace line out. The only th error there was that prior to getting to that mark, if the forward hand had looked into the boat, you could have seen there was too much spinnaker sheet through the ratchet block and tailed it in possibly put their foot on it, in which case it would have been a sensational set. Here the importance of apparent wind comes in as 280 overtakes 300. Yes, you can see Chris has gone out on the wing and what we call hotted the boat up a bit more. Therefore he's driven the apparent forward, therefore the boat's just rolled over the top of 300. 300 was, um, the skipper was sitting in and, and not getting enough apparent going early enough. See Chris there also working the main sheet without even looking at the sail. He's doing the whole thing by feeling the boat. He's trying to sight a jibe angle to the next mark. It's keeping a good lookout. In this scenario, the roll reverse a fair bit because it is so important for the forward hand to maintain good concentration on the spinnaker. And the skipper can do most of what he needs to do by balance. watching that jibe again, it's important there to uh, keep the way through the boat clear so that both are across properly. Certainly the forward hand should go from wing to wing if the skipper turns the boat enough to bring the boat onto the best course for the next, next leg and to generate enough apparent early enough. we have a little uh, set to on the uh, leeward mark as the close 
racing uh, produced some quite interesting situations during the series. I've been in that tactical position before. Here we have uh, a jibe attack rather of uh, Graham and uh, Stewart. So it was a much better attack than us. Graham kept looking forward all the time. His only error was probably to clamp on the main sheet a bit too much as he came out of the tack. Therefore the boat stopped. If you'd, if you'd let it, eased it out, it would have rolled through a bit better. How much steering is there in the tack and, uh, well, the speed of the tack? Graham seems to be throwing the boat around very quickly. Other skippers seem to take it a little bit uh, slower and concentrate on keeping the boat flatter. Is there any special technique that you have found to be the most successful? Well, it's the same as driving a rally car or driving anything. It's a conservation of energy thing. You should uh, accelerate the boat slowly into the tack through the middle of the tack, tack be at maximum acceleration as you come out, slow the whole thing down again. Um, if you do it that way, then the, the boat will come out of the tack with some pace on, which is the object. I think the, the rule in the rally car is it isn't how fast you go into the corner, it's how fast you come out. And uh, it's certainly true with any form of sport and particularly with sailing. Here's a couple of our veterans in the uh, class who are enjoying the close racing in the middle of the fleet. Jeff and his mate have been around for several years. Another shot of Clive's technique again, which is very good. You can see the main ship going in and out. It was pretty gusty up this end of the fleet, so he's having a little bit of trouble. We're going on to the uh, square and uh, the important thing here is to uh, keep the boat at maximum speed. Can you just explain what you do yourself? Well, there's a whole bunch of tacti tactics involved here also because the left-hand side of the course was in much less breeze, so the object on that downwind leg, that what we call the sausage. The first thing to do was jibe and get back out into the breeze again. Um, those people who left it late there, such as um, the boat that Clive tangled with, would suffer greatly because they would go up into an area of no speed. You obviously want to maximise the amount of breeze and maximise the amount of speed. This is Clive halfway down the course. He's already taken a jibe out onto starboard and come back again on port. And um, he, he would have made very large gains on the boats which would have stayed on port for a longer period of time. He's just dropped back onto starboard on the ley line into the bottom of the mark. And I don't doubt he took quite considerable chunks out of those who didn't take that course. Here you can see he's also, he has the boat suitably wound up. But both crew are out. The boat at this point in time, he's trying to get maximum downwind. He, he's not going to a high mark, he's trying to get downwind as fast as he can. He's already put in three jibes. Um, but you have to get the weight out to get the apparent up to get the whole thing working. To sit in the boat.